Greetings, and welcome back to Switch to Linux. And I just realized that I completely forgot to change my title, so let me change the title before I turn everything over. But I'll turn everybody on so you can hear them. You just can't see them. How's everybody doing? Oh, fine. Ah! I'm right. just going to yell. Going house Sounds crazy. Good. Yeah, that's, that's how most people are doing, right? So are we uh, asking, is Linux going to work on that, or is Linux going to work that, or is Linux going to on that, or is Linux going to on work that? I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> I don't have my banners <laughs> up here. <laughs> well, yeah. Linux work on that. All right, double check. Hey, I, I just said I'm an author. I didn't say I'm an editor. <laughs> yeah. I will show you what Linux will work on. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah, I got I got a very inter interesting story about that. All right, hold on. Before we dive on into that, for you guys following it, uh, I have started to see the Synaptogy book start to roll out to a lot of different places now. Um, and if you just head on to synaptogy.com, then you will find um, you'll actually find the uh, uh, I've up I'm updating that list. I'm going to try and update that list once a week, uh, just to kind of see what's going on there. So. Um, that's rolling out. I put the audiobooks up there and I've even seen, uh, audiobooks are starting to roll out like Kobu already has audiobooks rolled out. And, uh, there's a couple other places I saw them as well. So anyway, anyway, so how's everybody doing? Uh, Good. I, I saw Quint try to jump in, then he ran off, I guess. So nope. <laughs> he had his chance. We, we scare him off. All right. Um, Dan, what's going on your way? I don't know. Your video or your uh, stream today seemed to prompt me to take inventory of all the machines I got around. All here. right, sweet. So you can set up a little shop if you need to, right? <laughs> I made some interesting discoveries too. Hey, there's Quint. How's it going, Quint? Different, different room today. Oh, uh, we can't. Oh, I'm at, I'm at, I'm at my other house. So nice, very cool, awesome. Okay. Oh, that's other why house. it took me a minute. Yeah. That yeah. That's why it took me a minute to get in because I didn't have everything logged in on this computer. Yeah, I hear oh. that. I hear that. All right. Uh, so, World of Unix, how's it going there? You went from World of Linux to World of Unix. What's up with that? Yeah, so I changed my name because I'm kind of planning to, to just focus not only on Linux but all types of Unix systems because I'm really talking a lot about Mac OS and free Good. BSD and open BSD. So Good. it just makes more sense of just talking inside Unix All right, awesome. for that. Good. So we'll, we'll have talk to you about it and also Quint about it when we get to that, about how to run Linux on, on Mac, if you are so inclined, I think you already sent me the instructions yeah. on discord. Yeah. I also, um, Tom, I put a list together of all my different hardware parts. Excellent. Excellent. So I can tell what I can tell everybody what I have. Um, all right, Farron OS says we do need a Doom Linux um, over on Discord. So, <laughs> all right. Um, so just uh, just enough why for everyone jumping in. We're just gonna go through the different hardwares and things that we use, and uh, just kind of talk about uh, what Linux works on well, what we've had issues with, and uh, things like that. So hopefully we'll give you guys some ideas yeah. if you're just starting out, because. Well, some of us can't afford to go out and just buy, you know, drop $1,000, $2,000 on a custom Linux system, but you can go to Best Buy, spend a couple hundred bucks and, you know, put something together that runs Linux just fine. I mean, perfectly, literally. So we're going to be talking yeah. about that kind of stuff. And if anybody needs me to pull up a website, let me know and I'll go ahead and do that. So um, would anyone, let's finish the comments out first. Say hello to everybody. Douglas Ward says, Brr, early dinner. <laughs> Very cool. How's it going? Uh, specs in November 2012 are processor, 1 gigahertz, uh, faster, 1 gig of RAM, 32, or 64 gig, 3 gig, uh, 3 hard drive space, oh, 3 hard drive space, 16 gig, I can't read that. That was in September of 2012. Yeah, I kind of remember those days. Go back to 2002. I remember having computers back then, man. That thing had a rip roaring 300 megahertz. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. I bought a laptop back then. I forget. I wish, I wish I could remember the specs on that. Kitty Cam loves never ending vacations. Yeah, I know. I know. I've got Linux on my license plate. Seems to work just fine. Nice. All right. Hello, Maverick. How's it going there? Five Sinclairians. Greetings, Dorco. Hello there, Mr. Tech Guy. Greetings, Andrew. How's it going there? And let's see. Haven't checked out in a long time. How's it been? Very good, Ryan. How are you doing? Welcome back. Uh, watch this live stream on an upgraded 2006 Mac Mini running 64-bit Peppermint. Very good. 
A machine could possibly run Linux, but in memory of my mother, I kept it on Windows XP. There you go. All right. Just put uh, Linux Mint Mate on it. Very good. All right. All right. So, so uh, um, who wants to jump on in? Can I just say something first? Yep. Yep. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. This is probably going to be the new norm for me. We usually come over here in the summer since there's a pool. So just nice. expect this is going to be the new nice. norm throughout oh, the nice. summer. Cool. All right. Yeah, if anybody else wants to go first, they can. Otherwise, I'll go first. All right. Uh, let's just keep our traditional thing, and I'll just go in, in line here on my screen so that we make sure we get everybody. So, Dan, we'll jump in first. Uh, give us um, – just give us uh, maybe uh, to start on rather than just giving us a giant list of everything you're using – uh, start on with just your main system you're on and uh, or your main system you run Linux on in the event you're, you're on a Mac or something like that. The main system that I'm using right now is um, an AMD Ryzen 7 2700X with 16 gigs of RAM in it and a SUS Crosshairs 470 motherboard um, fixed with graphics, uh, GTX uh 1060 ti um it's my main linux machine um it's in a giant cosmos case at any given time i can whip drives in and out of it without any problem i have like um i have like six one terabyte western digital blues in the uh three and a half size and i have four assorted one terabyte size of ssds to use Nice. Very good. And any issues that uh, come to mind? Um, with this machine, um, not really. The biggest problem I've had lately that popped up is the new Ubuntu's 2004 don't like my Epson printer, which really mm -hmm. makes me angry because I'm not going <clears> to <throat> throw away a $150 printer that's got 50 bucks worth of ink in it, too. Yeah. Do you have, uh, I mean, are there drivers you can grab for it? I went to the Epson website. They do make <clears throat> drivers for it. The drivers do not work with Ubuntu. The scanner driver uh, does because it's a workforce. It's uh, all in one. Yeah, yeah. The I scanner know the drivers with Epson's are good. The scanner software is like Windows quality scanner software. I mean, they put a lot of work into it. It's really nice. But the trying to get the printer to work, forget it. Uh, printer yeah. works with uh, Debian L. Uh, the Debian Mint Edition, Debbie, just fine. So it's just something in the new Ubuntu that's doing it. It's mm -hmm. something in the new U Ubuntu that's kind of cooking the horse. All right. Sounds good. Uh, Quint, main system, what do you got? So my main workstation is a Lenovo ThinkStation S20. I bought it cheaply. I don't remember how much. It was like maybe $100 off of eBay. It has a... Um, it has an Intel Xeon W3565, which is a um, 3.2 gigahertz CPU with four cores and eight threads. Um, and then the graphics card it had some kind of old NVIDIA graphics card in it when I bought the computer, but I put an AMD Radeon Pro WX3100, which is a really good graphics card. It works great with Linux. I've had no issues with it. Um, has four gigabytes of that graphics card is four gigabytes of memory. The system has 20 gigs of RAM. I think it came with four and I put 16 in it. And then um, I have a Seagate, one of the Seagate, um, what do you call those? The combo drives, the FireCuda combo drive, which has like both an SSD and an H and a regular hard drive. And you know, yeah, I'm sure you guys probably know what I'm talking hybrid. about. Yeah, they have a name for it. Yeah, there's hybrids. Yep, hybrids. Yeah. It's a one terabyte drive, or it's actually, it's a two terabyte drive. So I put that wrong in my document and I'm running Fedora workstation 32 on that system. All right. Very good. Any issues? Mm -mm, I've never had any issues. The Lenovo computer also came out in like 2009. It's a pretty old computer, but it's still pretty high spec. All right. Yeah, I've had um, no issues with it. Good. Pretty much, if it has Think in the name, you're not going to have issues. Same thing with, like, you know, like, ThinkPads and Linux, ThinkStation. Yeah, yeah, those are, and they're they're just good, so that works well. Um, tech, you're up. What do you got? 
Uh, I have a custom built system. I've got a Ryzen 7 1700 overclocked, of course, because that's what you're supposed to do. Um, I've got a mid range motherboard, though. It's just an Asus B350, but I got 32 gigs of 3200 Corsair of Sapphire RTX 580, uh, which is also overclocked, because of course you do. Uh, a one terabyte M.2 drive from Crucial, two 500 gig Corsair solid state drives in it. Um, and it's, uh, I'm also running Fedora Workstation 32. I just switched over from, um, Pop OS and I'm not having any issues with it. It's, it's been running solid mm. as a rock for me. So can't complain. Yeah. Fedora's just come so long. It's so good these days. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, Wordle Linux or what's that Wordle Unix? All right. So for my main system, which is a desktop, I've custom built it. So it has an AMD Ryzen... 52400G. It's one of those APU combos. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM dual channel. So I have four slots. So I'm only using two slots. I have two hard drives and two SSDs because uh, one of the hard drives has Windows, one of the SSDs has, has Linux, and the other stuff with the SSD and the hard drive has Manjaro and, and Dev1 on it. So so that's what it is. Uh, and then I have a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 950. At least it's from the previous generation. And uh, a gigabyte motherboard and the chipset is B450. So other than, other than that, uh, that's what it is. So I guess the only issue that I had um, was, was most likely with installing debian on it uh because it it's kind of a little bit new right like uh, at least amd ryzen and when you go to distributions that might not have the latest drivers and stuff it's just a little bit more tricky to get it set up so that was kind of the only problem but if i would put ubuntu on there i'm sure it would work fine so that's mm -hmm. just my issues that i would have for that very good very good all right, so I'm running also a, a custom system, and uh, I'm running a c case as a Cougar, old Cougar case I had. I wanted to upgrade the case, but I couldn't find one that actually has front bays for my IC dock, so I'm stick with the Cougar. Uh, board is an MSI B350, and I have 16 gigs DDR4 G scale RAM, uh, Ryzen 5 1600, and I think my graphics card is a 5700. Um, XT with four gigs of RAM, which was a deal exclusive to Best Buy when I picked it up. So um, I think that pretty much covers what I have. And I'm running Linux Mint 18.3. Eventually, someday I will upgrade to 19. I get uh, the only issues I get is every once in a while I'll get um, a system freeze, you know, a couple times a month maybe. Just power off the system, power back on. It's good. But, uh, and who knows, that might be fixable if I, you know, actually apply to updates sometime. <laughs> but uh, I don't update nothing. Why not, you know? So, anyway, um, that's what I have there. Um, so, we'll kind of move on maybe to some other fun tech that you have experimented with and, uh, or Am other I fun the, projects. Um, Go ahead, Quint. Am I the only Intel guy here? You no, I have mixed. <laughs> Yeah. No, not at all. I have a, a late 2012 iMac, and I got a MacBook Air, and also I got other computers that mm -hmm. do have an Intel processor inside yeah. of it. Yeah, I'm my, curious. My other, you know. yeah, my uh, Linux work computer for web design stuff, I think that that's an Intel as well. Um, it's a Dell Omniplex, I forget, uh, but I think it's a, I, yeah, it's a, in fact, it's an i5. Um, yeah, the desktop. Other, yep. The desktop that I had that this one replaced um it's now in the living room with cody on it it's an, uh, an intel core i7 uh 37 7, uh, 70k and um it's got a gtx it's a really old graphics card it's a gtx 560 yeah back when they still had driver honestly it. though um yep after using the Xeon in my main computer, I don't think I could ever switch to anything lower. The Xeon is just awesome. <laughs> I, they're expensive. They're server class processors, but they're just awesome, and I've had no issues with them. If you do a lot of heavy workloads, Xeons are very difficult to beat. I can fully testify to that because I work in enterprise environments, and I tell you, man, those Xeons are, for all of Intel's other issues, and there are many, Xeons are pretty solid. 
Yeah. And it's a 2009 Xeon, too. It's not like it's a brand new one. Oh, yeah. They'll, they'll run forever. Yeah. I had, I that had was old... back when they knew how to make them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me check in on comments here, and then we'll jump on over to some other, other odds and ends that we might have laying around. Maybe laptops, pies, other fun things that you're doing. Uh, let's see. Where did I leave off? Um, let's see. Trying to install Linux on an Android phone. Well, you know, I mean, Android is Linux, technically. Um, uh, let's see. Any of you guys working with the Linux phones? Uh, Quint might. I'm not sure if he's AFK right now, but we'll ask when he gets back. Um, I, uh, I, I know Pizza I want does. To get a Pine phone is what I want to get um, to play around with it. I'm currently messing with another Android phone for a review, but eventually a Pine phone will be, I would like to get my hands on one of those. The pine okay. phone is still a pine cone. Is it, uh, <laughs> Jeff says suggestion until anything past mint 19 starts working correctly. Let's just stay every Linux version released prior to October 2019. It might have something to do with the newest kernel. Yeah, I guess some people have had some issues with uh, some of the newest kernels, but you know. Um, I don't know if you guys had any issues. I mean, you guys running Fedora. You're like running the latest without any problems, nope. right? Well, <laughs> zero. When, when, when you got... come back around to me, I can do some explaining. All right, go, go ahead and explain now. I'm going to kind of flip through the comments and see if there's more here that we want to look okay, at. Okay, on top of the two uh, desktops I just described, I'm going to get into, this is one of my favorite laptops that I purchased almost 20 years ago. <laughs> it's a Latitude uh, 15... Yeah, I forgot the notes. I haven't looked at it in so long. I forgot. It's a 1537. And um, right now it's running Mint LMDE Debbie on it. Nice. Yeah. From the USB stick. Now, the thing that the, this computer is weird about, it has a dual Intel, Intel Core 2 dual in it. And at the time I bought this computer, all the other stuff I was running, including this computer, was on Windows 32 bit. Mm -hmm. I, I stayed away from 64-bit for a very long time until I got to another machine over here. I'll show you later that actually came with Windows 8. But all, it didn't occur to me that these were 64-bit machines, and it's running 64-bit Linux Mint LMDE on it right now. 64-bit uh, processors were around way before 64-bit OSs were around. Well, I saw because of Windows XP and that error in the single-core processor, I just kind of milked along to 32-bit as far as it could go. And Because I didn't think, you know, when they first started coming out with that stuff, it was all perfected anyways. You know how computers go. Yeah. But um, this has got the... Um, this has got the older 4.19 kernel that runs with Debian because it is, you know, Debian based. I had I have a stick with Budgie on it from uh, 2004, which has got the 5. Point whatever kernel on it. It does not function properly. It'll boot up on this machine, but none of the software will open. It won't find the Broadcom driver, which this does. And um it's just amazing that something like that works on something this old. And the reason I still have this machine around is because this was a special order machine. It has crystal audio chipset in it for the audio jacks, which is not cheap. Crystal audio stuff is very expensive. And I can plug this into my phonograph, fire up Audacity, and actually just rip a, a vinyl record right off the bat and take um, audacity and then chop it up by songs and okay. you can do the same with cassette tapes too except they're a little harder to work with because you have the background hiss from the uh, cassette heads running mm -hmm. but um that's you, the battery you can, in this uh, filter that out though with audacity. the battery in this machine still amazingly runs at least three to four hours huh shocking <laughs> My 10-year-old yeah. uh, computer battery died like five years ago. Okay, I'll let somebody else now show off a piece. <laughs> All right, well, so I can't quick, really... Yep. Oh, okay. Oh. World of Links, go ahead. You're Who's going right. next? Uh, yeah, World, so World anyways, I can't, I can't show it off because it's a desktop, but I can tell you what it is. So it's like an old 2003 AMD Atlon XP, a 1.03 gigahertz processor, single core. 
uh, it has like a really old NVIDIA G4 6000 series from like 2005 and something, a Creative Sound Blaster 24-bit, the very first 24-bit sound card, which was from probably 2003 around that time. So it and, fits in an ISA bus. Yeah. It, rather it, than a PCI bus. It, it is a PCI bus, though. So it's like early 2000s. Because they had an ISA bus. bus before that. And mm -hmm. Sound Blaster was making cards for that because the motherboards yeah. didn't come with sound capability. Yeah, I that's the thing. But anyways, that computer is able to run Kubuntu, the latest long-term support, just fine. And it has 1.5 gigabytes of RAM. Of course, I upgraded it. Right? Of course. A 2003 motherboard is able to support 1.5 gigabytes of RAM. And it works just fine. And I'm surprised. So even computers from the early 2000s can still run Linux just fine. I, I was pretty one. impressed. This one says uh, um, the markup on it'll take 32 gigabytes of RAM, and and it's yeah. at least it's at least a 2005. And I I think back then even then I bought it used. Yeah. So old technology. I know that it's slow. Pretty obvious. A single core isn't the best for doing modern work, but at least for basic task, it actually runs good. Uh, except playing YouTube videos is not the best. Uh, when you put it to 240p, it does work fine. But just saying that old computers can definitely run Linux, and you don't have to throw them away at all. Yeah. Well, this computer here I just showed you that's running LMDE on it. On the hard drive, it actually has Peppermint yeah. 9 on it, 32-bit. Yeah. Because it never occurred to me to try the 64-bit because I had 32-bit Windows on it yeah, before yeah. that. So nice. it, it runs great with 32-bit Peppermint, just fine, too. All right. Yeah. Um, tech, uh, since Quint vanished, well, we'll go with tech. Oh, no, Quint's still there. He showed up. Hey, I'm here, yeah. Um, hey, who's ready? You... I'm tech ready. Tech might have frozen. I think Tech might have frozen. Are you there, Tech? I think tech froze. All right, go ahead, Quinn. <laughs> so this laptop here is an HP Pavilion um, X360 convertible laptop. It was mainly only, like, I think it was only like $200. It's touchscreen, and the touchscreen works perfectly fine under Linux. As you see, let me you see. I don't know how well you can see this, but yeah. touchscreen works fine. Like if I open something, oh, yeah. you can nice. see touchscreen yeah. change. And it's one of these flip laptops, and and it'll automatically rotate and everything. Like everything works perfectly on this laptop. Nice. It has an Intel Pentium, some old. It's a Pentium Silver Five Thousand, I think. So pretty low end processor, only four gigs of RAM. I think it's a one hundred twenty eight gig eMMC drive. So it's a pretty low end system, but with Fedora um, Workstation thirty two. Um, it works fine. The only issue that I've had with it is the Wi-Fi drivers. It's a Realtek Wi-Fi card, and so you have to load additional drivers in order to get it to work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Uh, tech, what do you got? Um, Come on, Tech, wow us. I have a Mac Mini G4 from 2005. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is, I love, so I love like oddball hardware that's not x86. Like I love the PowerPC stuff. I love ARM processors. Like if I could afford the new PowerNow stuff that they've got, but those start for the motherboard and the CPUs at like $1,100. <laughs> so that's worth nothing else. <laughs> so uh, it's a lot of my price range, but um, I, there is a Linux distro out there that you can hack onto the original, I'm going to say the original, onto the Xbox 360. Um, so I am thinking about doing that because I like the PowerPC processors so much. I've always thought that they're a very cool design. I looked at some of the white papers on them years ago, and I think that they're just, I think that they're better than x86 is, except in terms of power efficiency. Um, and when it comes to x86, you're getting a lot more, bang for your buck in terms of like battery life and from the wall pull very good yeah um awesome. so i have a lot of different computers laying around over here but i'll um let me see if i can uh, get if i can remember the 
password into this to get the system specs. Can't remember if I, can I, or not. I didn't know we were going through all of our computers. Because no, no, I, I don't have, have time for that. <laughs> I haven't even got to my <laughs> closet I, yet. I don't have time for that. Uh, um, I'm just trying to figure no. out what I'm running on uh, this other Dell. So I guess the next one I'll talk about, um, because it's a nice system, uh, for you guys that need a NAS, and you know, there's commercial NASs you can get network attached attached storage. What I'm actually using is Open Media Vault, and the reason I like this one, there's like free NAS as well, which is based on FreeBSD. I like Open Media Vault because it's based on Debian, and because it's based on Debian, I know how to run it better. And so uh, I bought this actually as an open box special. It was lacking a power cord, which I had plenty of at home anyway. And so I think I talked the guy down to like a hundred bucks for it. And it's uh, it's one of the uh, Dell and Spirion um, micro towers or the mini towers, I should say. So uh, it just has, you know, space for one one hard drive and one DVD drive. I pulled out the DVD drive and put two hard dr two micro hard drives in there instead of uh, the one large one, uh, two, two and a half. That one is running a uh, Intel Pentium N. 30, uh, 3700 at 1.6 gigs with uh, how much RAM is in there? I think it's four gigs of RAM. I'm not seeing my RAM listing right on my diagnostics page. Um, but uh, it's running kernel 4.9. I did update it uh, to the latest version. And uh, that guy there, the reason I like that, it gives me network shares. It manages all the network. It also gives me media streaming. So all my um, all of my, uh, maybe maybe my v videos are on it. Maybe they are, allegedly. Um, definitely all my music is. And uh, any device in the house can jump right on into that, stream right from, from it directly from a, um, uh, just from a, um, uh, just an open media server. So it does everything perfectly. And that's, of course, uh, interfaces to the television with a Raspberry Pi where I can watch any movie that I have in my DVD collection just by the click of a button on any one of a, a number of little devices. So that's uh, if you're looking for a NAS that can also do media streaming and all sorts of that other stuff, Open Media Vault is absolutely amazing. So, and that's just running on a little $100 Dell um, mini tower is what I got. I all right. did something similar with my next cloud. Yes, my next cloud runs, uh, runs actually legitimately on a cloud, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm unusual in that respect, just so I can access it from the internet without exposing my local network to to the internet. So, yeah, I'm the and same way to... with my next cloud. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyone else got something you want to chat about? I can talk about my server. Sure, good. We'll do server. Unlike Anybody Tom, my server. server. Yeah. Unlike my, uh, unlike Tom, my server is not as power efficient as his. It's a De it's some Dell server. I don't remember the model. It's or it's a Dell PowerEdge T. What is it? It's a I think it's a Dell PowerEdge T like three thirty or something like that. I don't remember the exact model, but it's a mine Dell can run on a, server. Mine can run on a battery for a day. <laughs> and um, um. I don't. Yeah, I don't remember the exact. It's a. It's a. It's a Dell PowerEdge T three hundred. That's what it is. I'm pretty sure. Um, but my server runs um, XCPNG, which is a hypervisor, and so I have multiple things. I have an Open Media Vault server on there. I also have my Unify controller for my network. I have a free PBX system for a couple IP phones, and I have a. Um, what else do I have? I have a VPN server on there too. Cool. But yeah, unlike Tom, my system's very loud and it's not power efficient. And I'm sure it probably, <laughs> I don't pay the power bill, but I'm sure it probably uses up a significant portion of our power. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can probably. actually calculate that on my UPS. Like uh, <laughs> almost all my computers, except for my laptop, I guess, is connected to UPS. So. Right now, I can money. check, and I'm using about 120 watts of power for for everything um, on. That's a, yeah. my server is on a UPS too, along with all the yeah. networking equipment. But I don't remember what it is. It's typically around maybe around some typically around maybe about 150 watts or something. Cool. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. All right. Anyone else have a server you want to chat about? Got more junk. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. used to have a server until that uh, 
it I, I scrapped it. Uh, eventually, I'll build another server. It's just that uh, that computer kind of got decommissioned and now uh, is being used by my dad for other stuff. So Damn. at least for my personal server, I have to find another computer to, to do it on. Yeah. Well, how about, to um, that out. how about the uh, Raspberry Pi? So it's a new one that just came out with like 8 gigs of RAM, which is overkill for even a server. <laughs> Um, eight gigs of RAM. Yeah, there's a Raspberry Pi just dropped with eight gigs of RAM. That's epic. Wow. I want to find me one. It's like, I want to build a system out of that, man. That's good. Uh, Skybear yeah. to Dan's. Looks like you're an audiophile. Should have been a radio engineer. Um, do you do anything special with Linux with um, audio stuff, Dan? Um, other than... As far as... It... Other than actually um, working with it, um, modifying it with Audacity a little bit, um, using a computer to actually capture what's on another format, not really. Hmm. Um, this is another oldie but goodie, and it's also a dual core, probably from the turn of the century. And it's they made a lot of these. It's a Dell Latitude D6, D630. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, a six thirty D. Let me, D3. See, let, me see, let me see all the form factor stuff on that. That's that's getting pretty close to the one that I bought um, back in college, which would have been right turn of the century ish. They made a lot of these. This is a popular unit, but um, I don't know what I want to do with it because actually, this is a computer that I used for work. It has software on it. It also has Windows XP on it. Cool. But it has software that talks to machinery from around that time and programs it. And hmm. without that software, you can't fix the machinery. And it's kind of, you know, to the point, it, with the, the machinery requires a dongle that requires a nine-pin D-shell computer. <laughs> Good luck finding one of those. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, Although so, I think you can get them now on um, yeah. USB, USB to nine-pin. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only yeah, like that, the, the software is this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it, that's like well, I remember when um, right when Windows Vista came out. Our lab, I was I was still in the cancer lab at that time. We just spent twenty thousand dollars on a real time PCR machine. Like six months later, they upgrade to Windows Vista, and the software will not work on Vista. It was like really. <laughs> so now mm -hmm. we have this computer stuck on XP for a twenty thousand dollar piece of science equipment. Well, this one here, I don't mind it plowing this one under. This one came with Windows 8 on it when I bought it. It's an HP NV M6. And um, I really can't use it for audio work because it only has one jack on the side. And I don't know whether it's for mic headphones or both or or what. Yeah, um, it might be a combo port where it does both. But you have to have yeah. the right pin out on your connector. Yeah, but, um, yeah, I know sure. mine has a combo port on it. This has an a lot I... of new ones have combo ports. Yeah, this has an i5 processor in it. Um, do 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 do. It has an i5 in it. Uh, it's a th a 3220M, four cores or two cores, four threads. Um, the GPU in it's Ivy Bridge Mobile. With eight gigs of RAM, I can repurpose this machine. I use this for work also, but this was different because there's a dongle that goes in the USB port that plugs into something that's called CAN bus. Yeah. And CAN bus stands for con controller area network. And in a piece of machinery that I was working on, there was two sets of twisted pair wires that went to every controller in the device. It was just like having your home network, except it was a network for the machinery. Yeah. And um, since uh -huh. I'm not working anymore and this machine still has some value, I would like some suggestions what would run good on it. Hmm. Um, also, Next Dan, was that, Dan, was that Dell lap, the Dell Latitude laptop you just showed us, is that laptop old enough to have a modem? A built-in modem? Yep. Is that, that's, I'm just curious. 
Um, yeah, back that. It has. Oh, you know what? It does have a phone cord port. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. Built-in yeah. modem. <laughs> nice. Ah, the with all the rage. Oh, oh, what is this one? This one has a phone. Yeah. Co- this one's got so many ports on it, it blows all my others away. It's got an Ethernet, phone cord, <laughs> HDMI, <laughs> yeah. fifteen you know, pin VGA, uh, the- mic in, audio out, headphones. Yeah, let's not talk about Apple. I'd say yeah, they, you know this, my this MacBook. Book. It even Go has a, it even has a um the uh, memory card slots. It's got two of them. You guys yeah. want to know what my MacBook Pro from 2017 has? Two USB C ports and a headphone jack. Yep. yep. Hey, That's I all got you need to uh, get the. This one's yep. a 2014 MacBook Air. We got a full size SD. We have a USB port. We have a FireWire, another USB port, and look at that, a MagSafe charger and a yeah. presumably a combo port. Yeah, that's port. right. Yeah. Yeah. I wish that's what I had a bit of MagSafe because MagSafe has saved my computer a couple times. MagSafe yeah. was the best thing that Apple ever got yeah, rid of. But sure. this, is, this is the MagSafe. one port that's on the 2017 MacBook. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Mac. Is there not even guys. a second is there only all right, a question one? for um, you Mac guys? Yep, Just the there. one. That's all you need. What do you got the question there? for you Mac guys is, are Macs really as bad as Louis Rossman makes them out to be? Louis Rossman is a Not personal really. vendetta against no. Apple, so that's why I don't watch him. <laughs> I don't care that he hates <laughs> Apple, but I will not take anything he says as being truthful and unbiased because he hates them so much. Not that he's not you right, and that, sometimes... Um, but mm. Apple puts a lot of hard work into the engineering these devices, and just because mm-hmm. you get a few bad apples, if you'll allow me to say so, doesn't sure. mean that their That's engineering yeah. is bad. Yeah. It's obvious, you know, he has anti-biased issues with Apple. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah, he's not anti-bias; he's biased against Apple. Yeah, that's oh, what yeah. I meant to say. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm kind of split 50-50 because I kind of see what he's talking about. and um, Yeah. And indeed, there are some legit things that they've done that are kind of screwy, and, and they do make it harder and harder and harder to repair them. I completely buy that argument yeah. part. but uh, Yeah, it's just uh, simple things, too, yeah. like the push button on the phone. You know, he says that, you you know, once that's tampered with, it'll never work again or yeah. you can change the I, screen. I and... think, yeah, I think Macs yeah. are good good they're just not worth the price and uh fortunately i haven't had to pay full price i didn't buy this one but, new. yeah i bought it used yeah. um well well we are yeah. talking about mac though i asked world of unix because he uses mac all the time and and i knew he'd be on uh sorry quinn i just didn't know if for sure you'd be on or not so um yeah. if you're using one of the newer macs it is still possible to run linux but you have to do a couple steps first can you explain that to us so, um, so on the newer Macs, what happens with the T2 chip is the T2 chip, what it does is that encrypts everything that goes in and out the computer. The problem with that is that in order to decrypt all that information that goes in and out of that computer, you need to, to have a signature. So Mac OS, which is Apple's default operating system, has that key signature. And if you install Windows 10 using Boot Camp and other stuff, they also have that signature in order to unlock the T2 chip in order to decrypt everything. But when you try to boot Linux on a USB, then it won't work because Linux doesn't have any type of signature. So Apple just doesn't decrypt anything. So the good news is, is um, you're able to just disable that security feature on the T2 chip because if you don't disable it, then it then it won't work. So um, what I found, it, it's actually pretty easy, but what you have to do is instead of booting inside Mac OS, you turn on your your new Mac and then you, uh, you put command uh, NR to go inside the recovery mode. And then when you're inside, there's an option for um, security options. Um, then when you go inside, then there's like a little button that, that says secure boot on it. And then you click on that. And then there's like different options that say like full security, medium security, and no security. You just have to disable disable it completely by putting no security, then apply, and then just restart your Mac with Linux. And then you just hold the option key until you see your your uh, Linux USB. So yeah. it's 
it's extra steps, but it's not that hard that yeah. you might think. One of the critical um, concerns about that new new security feature in Apple yeah. is if is if something goes haywire on your system, you can't you can no longer go into your system and boot into Linux easily in the in yeah. a recovery situation without having prior set your computer up to be able to do that so yes that's what that, that's the thing because by default they will enable that t2 security chip mm -hmm. to decrypt and encrypt yeah. everything which is very good for security because if it your is. mac gets stolen mm -hmm. they, they they can't do anything yeah but for durability that causes lots of issues Correct. And, and for the for the Mac I have, a friend of mine sent that to me and it was it was his brother's who passed away and um, he didn't need it. So he sends it to me, says, I think this is the password. It ends up not being the password. So I was able to get into get into Apple and drop into the root shell and change the passwords and then yeah. reboot the system. And I would say actually I was able to access all of the data on the computer just to verify there's nothing on there that was important. Um, but after we did that, we wiped everything out because... Never mind. Um, yeah. We wiped everything out, reinstalled the, out. you know, I didn't go for the absolute latest version of Mac, but I got pretty high up. I think I'm running Sierra on it. And then, you know, that's that's the type of stuff that you, to my understanding, you cannot do on a Mac any longer. Uh, Quint, do you have anything yeah. to add to that Mac discussion part? Boot up? Yeah, um, personally, I haven't tried to run Linux on my Mac since I use it for school and I have plenty of other Linux computers. And mm -hmm. so I, I honestly don't really have any input on this. One thing I will add, though, speak, going back to Lewis Rossman, if Lewis Rossman didn't, if if um, if everything that he liked about, like if he hated Apple, like if Apple did everything right, he wouldn't have a business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that Think is about it that true. way, true. which yeah. makes no sense why he hates on Apple so much, because if Apple wasn't around, or they did everything right like everybody else, he wouldn't have a business. That's never you know, made any sense to it me. It makes perfect sense because it's great yes. marketing for him because people love yeah. outrage culture. Yes. Hey, and he's and he <laughs> yeah. played it well. Played it well. Um, Tech, do you have anything else to add to the Apple discussion before we jump off? I just want to – I know I'm like the former Apple employee here, but I, I want to say I completely agree with this whole thing of like soldering everything – to everything like i get it faster lighter and i know who apple's targeting their products at so people like us who love to tear apart our stuff and fix it if the hardware goes wrong it's really not for us and i think it's gotten to that point i mean mm -hmm. if yeah. this thing over here dies on me this macbook it, i mean if i don't replace the whole logic board i'm not replacing anything in it so it, it's they, they build end of yeah. life into it i, I mean uh, but the the ugly truth of it is is that in a lot of cases in the majority of cases people end of life their own stuff because of stupid reasons. I mean, I've had people bring in their computers to me at, and say, it won't turn on. I've only had it for like 17 months. I don't want it. I want a new one. And I'll pull the battery out and discharge the capacitors and put the battery back in and power it on and say, have a good day. And it works perfectly fine. So people kill yeah. all their stuff all the time. It doesn't mean I agree mm -hmm. with what Apple's doing, but on some level for their end of it, it makes sense. Doesn't necessarily mean it's good for the consumer, but from mm. their mindset, the way they sell yeah. the product. It's, 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 it's the way of things to come. I mean, even yeah. cars yeah. now are coming with cars yeah. are now built with end of life built into them. They're only alive as long as you can buy parts for them and everything in them is electronic. The steering wheel, for crying out loud, ain't even connected to the wheels anymore. It's mm. connected by an electronic system. Yeah. So as for a Mac, so I have a late uh, iMac from late 2012 which i repaired and and uh, i literally had to grab a heat gun and remove all the adhesive and stuff pull out the screen i cracked it a little bit but the screen itself is fine just the glass put a new s 500 gigabyte ssd inside of it put it back in and put catalina and it works just fine which uh, I was still pretty impressed, but of course that's the old Apple products and stuff. And my MacBook Air is only 2017, so it's right before the T2 chip. It's right before that they introduce completely the the new models and stuff. So at least for me, I would rather buy the old Apple products than the new ones, though. Mm -hmm. Just because the T2 chip just make it more difficult. So 
That's yeah. why I bought that model. I think when it comes to a lot of things, people are turning to the point where they'd rather buy something that's a bit older than brand new. Yeah, I think yeah. An, one thing, another... Um, Go ahead, Quinn. Um, one thing I will say on this conversation about people throwing away things is that I there was a YouTuber who um, found a, a Core i7 PC at a garage sale for $20 because there was an issue with the hard drive and the people just basically threw it away. And it was like an, it was a 2015 computer is what he said. Isn't that crazy? That, yeah, for $20. Wow. That's, a, that's a sweet deal. Wow. It's yeah. worth at least $20 in parts. On. Yeah. Um, the problem, what he said was that it was actually a, an issue with the recovery drive, and so it was just an easy fix. And yeah, I just don't yeah. understand why people do that. Well, I think a yeah. lot of people just don't know you can do something else with it. Is the problem? Yeah, they that they, so they don't know they don't know what's inside of it. Like, mm -hmm. of course, at least all the viewers at least know how a computer works, at least with the RAM and the CPU and just how everything's built inside a computer, at least the basic parts. But some people just don't know anything about what's inside a computer. They don't even know what a CPU mm -hmm. is. Yeah, you know, that's true. I, I bet people bring me their whole tower and be like, yeah, my CPU is not working. Is your, is your processor not working or is the tower not working? <laughs> it's like... Yeah. Yeah. So, what's so the that's the, it's a big misunderstanding and just a, a lot of information that they just don't know. So I guess it's just getting informed. That's the most important part, especially with Linux and and anything that you buy, you need to get informed because if you don't and you don't know how it works, well, how are you supposed to either fix it or at least have some kind of recommendation? Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, there's, I don't know. Maybe we just need to teach a little bit more about how computers work. But going back to that Apple point, though, they're making it so you can't do anything about it. The thing stops for the stupidest of reasons, and mm, yeah, got thrown away. Yeah, um, yeah, which is sad. It's terrible. But, but uh, yeah. Um, any? Do we want to jump over and see? Is there any other nifty little projects? Um, other things that you're using? I mean, I know I'm doing. I can talk about either Raspberry Pi stuff or. Um, router stuff as well if anybody else has anything else stuff, like that um, jump in. <laughs> stuff i'm yeah. doing right now is mainly related to android devices so i don't know that's really relevant to this topic eh. no nah, maybe we'll save that for another day yeah, yeah. android stuff but you yeah, have, I have done a little bit of stuff with the pies yeah. but not so much. you're uh, are you still managing your network with the uh, with pies right now or not um I was using a Raspberry Pi for the VPN and stuff, but when I got the server, I quit doing that. I oh. moved everything onto the hypervisor. And also, I figured out the model is a Dell PowerEdge T410. That's the All server right. that I have. Very good. It works great. Right. I have absolutely zero issues with it. All right. Um, any other odd little projects like that anybody working on? Well, um, I, I guess the only thing is how my setup is, is made because all my computers are connected together, right? So uh, in, because my iMac is like a separate computer, and then I got my gaming PC, which is very powerful with the AMD Ryzen, that, that's a different computer. And then I got a bunch of other computers just on the ground, which are on, and I need to connect them together. So the first thing is that I use Synergy to, to have like a mouse and keyboard setup which mm -hmm. is amazing because now I can use my iMac and I can use my game PC and I can use all my other computers to get only one mouse and keyboard, which makes things very easy. And then Synergy allows me to also transfer files between it, which is also another cool thing. And then uh, Mac OS also has a server utility that you're able to, to put, like Mac OS server, that, that you're able to share files and stuff. So that's that's just my projects that I'm doing. So at least for my setup, uh, my computers are just connected together, which make makes things so much easier for a workstation. So you don't need one computer; you can just have a bunch of computers and just connect them together. So that that's my yeah. project for. Yeah. Yeah. I will. Can I? I will talk about some of the projects I have been running, though. If that's okay. Sure. Go for it. Um, what I've been. Um, 
the one of the things that I I had, so I have Open Media Vault on the server, which I actually tried to do free NAS first, but free NAS just didn't play well with being in a virtual environment. Mm-hmm. So I went with um, Open Media Vault instead, and that's worked fine. I just have I only have one hard drive in the computer, so I think I maybe get it's a I have one two terabyte drive in the server, so I, I don't have a ton of storage in it. So I think I gave it maybe like 500 gigabytes of allocated storage. Um, and I put a lot of, I put some movies and TV shows and stuff that I've ripped on there. And I'm probably going to put some music on there too. And I also just use it for file transfer between computers. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's just nice to have a server like that. Then I do, I've been playing around with free PBX a little bit with um, phone systems and things. And that works well. It's it's a little bit tricky to use. It's kind of like PF Sense, where it does. It's very complex looking, but once you figure out how to use it, it works fine. And I have one IP phone that it's hooked up to, and I have a couple soft phone apps too. Good. See, I mainly just play around with like networking equipment and things like that. Yeah. It's always fun to figure out how to get working. Um, anyone else have any things you want to talk about, or I'll chat about um, PF Sense, I guess. If you're talking tech, I, I really, I really would you like know. to get into PF Sense when our when my um, Unify route, my Ubiquity Unify router finally dies. I'll probably uh, try some PF Sense. Very cool, awesome uh, tech. Yep. Yeah. I said I'm trying to revive my Pinebook Pro again. Apparently, uh, distro hopping on that thing uh, blows up something called the U boot. <laughs> So <laughs> I, I, uh, I found out it does actually have power. So at least it's powering on physically. Uh, I just have to get a, a, an, an adapter for an eMMC to look at the U-boot to fix it or just hopefully just flash a new OS on there and maybe that'll fix it. But, hmm. So it's been, it's been an ordeal. It's not been working for like three weeks. And I finally so- found something to, to maybe get it working. So would you probably not recommend the pine buck right this second? <laughs> I, I, you know, if I hadn't been distro hopping on it, it probably would have been fine if I had just left Manjaro on there. Okay. All right. Yeah, I guess. Um, that's, that's one true. thing. What are, um, what are your guys' thoughts on System76 and Pine and all these other, like, Linux-specific companies? I know specifically System76 is just really expensive. I think that they are fishing for a market that can take in money. Mm-hmm. That's they're, they're they're throwing some bait out there and they're seeing if it grabs onto anything. And if it does, fine, they'll pick up speed and turn it into a, a money making ordeal. If it doesn't, it'll probably be discontinued. I almost feel yeah. like they're they're like the early. 2000s apple they kind of design their own systems and they build an os for those systems i mean they even put out drivers to fix you, issues you what? don't even have to buy a, a system 76 computer oh, to no, get linux to pop OS. no um, micro center sells De- lenovo's hp's and a few mm-hmm. others that already have ubuntu on them right, right. out the door yeah. sure yeah. but I system 76 is explicitly yeah. building their os yeah. Not only to be open well, source, but for their hardware. These their compu- hardware yeah. on their OS. These computers that they sell at uh, Micro Center are Ubuntu certified. I, I mean, I, Ubuntu I know already had a I, copy of the computer, and I know they are. But Matt, but Dell makes their money off of selling Windows systems. Mm-hmm. Dell is a Windows company that caters to Ubuntu throwing, developers. They're still throwing the fishing line out there to see what it grabs. Sure, sure. Yeah. But I'm just saying, I think System76 is a little bit different because of how dedicated they are to open source. Yeah. yeah. What I, I think I will say like, is I... Uh, Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, I think it was. I think System Seventy Six is. It's a. It's a great company, of course, and great product. I think it. If they want to have sustainability, the prices are too high. They need to develop a product that's a little bit lower end for the common user, because like as yeah. much as I love Linux, I can put together a computer that outspecs theirs for half the cost. And install anything on it that, that I want. was trying. That was the point like, I was trying to make with the other computers. Yeah. So I looked at one of the um, Thelio computers, like um, one of the Thelio computers, because I was just curious. And um, 
my um, S20 still outperforms the lowest Thelia, which is like over a thousand dollars, and it's like a quarter of the price. It just outperforms it so much better than the lower end Thelia, which is just ridiculous how expensive so they that, are. Yeah, that, desktop or laptop? The, I'm talking just, my um, just the basic Thelia. The Thelia is a desktop. It's one of those like wood, the one that has like the wood case on mm -hmm. it. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up here. So. Here's, yeah, uh, it's here's really pretty. Thelio. So with the Thelio, you can start out. We have an AMD Ryzen starting at four cores uh, or up to 16. So you can go, um, uh, let's see. So you can do the uh, AMD Ryzen with PCE 4.0 for an extra $200. We'll just keep it at the basic. Mm -hmm. You can choose your color. Um, so they have the dark. They have uh, two colors that are the same price. They have three of them that are $60 more. We have Pop! OS or Ubuntu. Um, Ubuntu doesn't cost anything more. The basic processor, um, we have 4, giga, uh, 4 gigahertz, uh, Ryzen 3rd Gen 32G. You can go up for like 50. You can go up to uh, the second gen. You can go spend all the way up to an extra $1,000 for 3rd Gen Ryzen 9 39. Basic default has 8 gigs of RAM. You can go up to 16 for 89. You can go up to 64 for an extra 500. And then the basic default is 120 gigabyte SSD. You can double that for an extra 80. And then there's additional storages, uh, power supplies included. Uh, GPU is an integrated graphics for nothing, or you, you're going to add you know, up to 1,500. Displays, if you need one, $500 for a display at their, their lowest. The keyboard, if you need a keyboard with it, 120 And I then think... warranty. Um, oh, sorry, Canada, an extra 100 bucks. <laughs> As I say, I think so, the cheapest just, yeah, device so, is a Meerkat for 555 yeah. But that yeah, starts that, with a... Ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. that Thelio uh, Basic there is 899 For yeah, reference, yeah. I put my system together for like 800 I, I don't know the difference between Canadian prices and American prices. So when you're talking with a thousand dollars, it might be way more. Like I built my system for about maybe six hundred Canadian dollars. So that means that it's probably way less in American money, but about a third. Yeah. So it would definitely be way more expensive because the last time I checked on System Seventy Six, at least in Canadian money, that was like. Oh, that that wasn't good at all, and I wouldn't be buying uh, System Seventy Six just because of that. The Australians have also, the same problem too. Their money's more like in your range as far as it being. It takes more your money to buy something than U.S. dollars. The Australians are in the same boat. Yeah, yeah. Australian is uh, Australia is uh, almost balanced, right? Maybe a few cents. Or something, yeah. but yes, uh, it's pretty close. Yeah, uh, that is not good, though. Uh, we're we're kind of holding at seventy five cents conversion rate, so each dollar there's a twenty five cents that I'm losing. So you know, I I I'll yeah. in something. I have a whole I have a whole big plastic grocery store bag full of Canadian coins. No bank around here will take them. <laughs> you so should be able uh, to take them to the bank. When I looked at the um, Thelios, the I looked at a, I looked at the th all three. There's three different models. There's the Thelio, and then there's the Thelio Major, and then there's the Thelio Massive. And mm -hmm. since you know, I'm I like Xeons, and I wanted a Xeon. The only the one that the only one that comes with the Xeon is the Massive, and that's like. Almost like five. It's like five to ten thousand dollars for like the like base stuff. So yeah. it's just way too expensive. And everybody complains about the new Mac Pro, and I'm like, this is normal. Like for Pro workstations, like five thousand dollars is normal. Like yeah. my computer when it came, my my ThinkStation is twenty. When it came out, it was probably like a three thousand dollar computer. I think would from what I read, but that was like twelve Not years ago. 
Hey, my I paid I paid two thousand dollars for my first computer. That thing was so amazing. It had a hundred gigahertz or a hundred megahertz processor and thirty two megabytes of RAM. It was awesome. <laughs> my very first computer, like very first computer, was a old Dell, uh, Dell Dimension from like nine in the nineteen nineties, probably nine ninety seven ninety eight that had Windows ninety eight on it. I remember. <laughs> those times uh yeah I, I remember using windows 98 when it was very small but yeah first computer that, that um the first computer that i ever used was probably around 2009 ish and it was a window it was i think it was a dell it was one it was one of those old dell i think it was like an optiplex or something it was one of those old mm -hmm. windows xp systems and this was maybe like in 2009 yeah they, those are those are pretty decent. I yeah. just picked me up one of those for yeah. seventy five bucks and installed Linux on it. It thing runs amazing. Uh, you know that's a good deal. Yeah, yeah. this was it, an old yeah. one though. This is probably yeah. maybe like a two thousand four or two thousand five Dell Optiplex, but that's yeah. I don't have many memories of it. And then I had an H. My first computer that I actually had that wasn't like a family computer was I had some HP Pavilion all in one computer with Windows seven. Wow. And yeah. then. That I got one of the um, Surface RT tablets, and mm -hmm. maybe within 15 minutes of getting the thing, I figured out I couldn't install the apps I wanted to on it, so I had to live with yeah. Internet Explorer. Yeah, those RTs, that is what shot Microsoft in the foot, because they've always had a yeah. problem with their marketing and branding. Because nobody knew yeah. the difference with it, unless you were like one of us computer geeks. Right, like they don't know. Uh, yeah. People are like, oh, yeah, it comes with the ARM process. Like when Chromebooks first came out, they had a struggle getting off the ground. I mean, Google had yeah. to basically like, like make this? a whole Chrome web store ecosystem and then had to allow Android apps to run on their devices because they were practically all ARM processes. So, yeah. The first yeah, computer no I way. worked on was called a Mintech, and it was an IBM clone. And this thing had a 12 megahertz processor in it. And, you, uh, and, and we were making circuit boards with this thing. And what you do is you'd make your circuit board on it. And you had to pan across a much larger area, and your monitor was just a window of the area you were working on because it was a CAD package. Yeah. And um, yeah. it's like when you hit redraw to reshow all the work you were done, you could have gone out, ate a sandwich, um, had lunch, come back, sweep the floor, and maybe it'd be on the screen. Yeah. And they, yeah. they, they, um, they, they, I think they had what's called CJ, CJI or C, uh, yeah. CJV or something like that. What are they called? Really old black and white monitor or old. Um, oh, CRT? CRT. The old CRT. The old, no, they had a name for the old CRTs that were in color. Oh, um, yeah. Because I remember you had the green monochromes and I had one of those. Yeah, but there was monochromes. I, I, there's. Yeah, There's and then I, I actually had yeah I had one of the one of the color ones as well, um, and I got a new one with uh, with my ni Windows ninety five amazing computer. Um, oh, what was the name of that? Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, with the circuit board software, the back side would have blue traces for the lines, and the and the other side, the front side, would have red traces, mm -hmm. and then there would be yellow hole yellow dots for the feed through holes. And this thing kept track of how how big the holes were, the solder mass, the thickness of the lines. It kept track of all of that. Mm -hmm. I was amazed. It all it all fit on a floppy, and I had to run it fifty miles away to a uh, printed circuit board shop, and that's the only file the machine would take to actually make the circuit boards. Yeah. Uh, Anna Rita jumped in with with a saucy message deleted by Quint. Hi, Anna Rita. Uh, Anna Rita, the, the last email I sent you is the audio book, so you can grab that. You don't need to buy it. You were on my beta team, so you get that. Mitchell, oh, has, yeah. Mitchell has an excellent uh, comment here I thought was worthy of discussion going back to System76. Markets are made at the margins. As the old savings goes, System76 prices don't bother me. Us spread theft Linux tinkerers aren't the intended market. And that is, I think, very true. And the question is, who is the intended market that's looking to buy a Linux desktop then? And that's kind of that catch-22, that they need that. Any other comment on that? Yeah. Uh, well. 
Not really. Yeah. So it's, Gary it's says like that monitors were VGA, but the VGA monitors were 15 pin plugs that came before yeah. that. I'm thinking that they were CGA monitors. That might be it. Yeah. Like if you're really talking, they about came out with the whole... ECGA monitors, to which which had a little better color graphics to them, and yeah. then they went to VGA. Yeah, like if we're talking about early 1990s, before everything was just VGA, right? Right, before so, VGA. So, yeah, before VGA. So it, um, at least, at least for that, uh, I remember that also, VGA. also using a very old laptop that had. Windows 3.1 on it. <laughs> I, I was very young, but I did use that, and that was my very first real experience with computers itself. Of course, it it was Windows, but it, it was actually DOS, right? So, so that was cool. Um. So this is a little off topic here, but I know Tom, you were looking. Are you still looking for like a Linux tablet or something? Um, maybe eventually, no time soon. Because um, one of the things I remembered is that a couple years ago, I think this was probably it was probably maybe like five years ago. Um, my we uh, um my grandfather got this Dell tablet. Um, that was running. It was running Windows eight, but it had an x eighty six. I think it was an Atom processor, and it. it's a Dell Venue eight Pro. And apparently, from what I've read on it, you can't buy. You have to buy them used now. I don't think Dell makes them anymore. I have. But um, they came with they came with Windows eight point one, but they were had an Atom processor in them, and the and you can access the BIOS. And so I wonder if that would make a good Linux tablet. Yeah, I was looking if you're around. okay with touchscreen. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's there's not a lot of those floating around. I know Walmart still actually has one, but I'd be really leery about buying one of them. <laughs> a Dell venue? No, 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 not a oh. Dell. It's talking about the the little tablet, like the the RCA the, 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 ones. The little oh, okay. yeah, yeah. I think I think it's the RCA ones, but they're they're like they run Windows yeah. with a tablet like form factor with a detachable keyboard. Mm. Um, I did have this... one of those from Insignia at one point in time. It just they just weren't ready yet, and so I sent it back. Mm. The Dell the one actually is like this. <laughs> there was there's I think there's an the eight is an eight inch, and there's also a Dell Venue Ten Pro, which is a ten inch. And so this is more like an iPad, where it's yeah. more it doesn't have a keyboard. I don't think mm -hmm. it's more like an iPad type tablet. But yeah. I would just recommend going with the two-in-one convertible laptops. These work great with Linux. The touchscreen. Yeah. How, how works small fine. can you do? Are there, though? Are there really this small? This is, ones? I think, maybe about 11 inches. Yeah, I think this is I, an 11 inch laptop. I look for something that's significantly smaller, personally. That's what... You'd want the my, Dell one, then, because that's well, 8 inches. Yeah, my original... My, my eventual plan is to be able to dump smartphones all together and just have a small <laughs> tablet type computer there with a um mm. with a uh, just a cellular um uh, modem and just yeah. turn it on when i want to and when it's when i'm not actively using it turn it off and throw in a cardboard you know or throw it in aluminum mm. foil or something yeah my idea is to get rid of <laughs> smartphones all together myself too yeah well i got this this thing with with two screens on it yeah but yeah. but really it it works like a tablet. You're able to to run applications uh, when when it's using all the screen and stuff. So if if I'm on Google Maps or I'm on Chrome or or on the internet, I can just use the entire screen like a mm -hmm. tablet. So I got more real real estate for for doing multitasking stuff. So at least for this phone, it's like a tablet, mm -hmm. right? Here, this is what the Dell tablet looks like right here. Ooh, yeah. Here's a better picture. Yeah, uh, I actually and are, I look. Are those still around or not? Those are the ones you said they don't. They, make Dell them. doesn't make them anymore, but I actually saw a brand new one on eBay for maybe like I think it was an eighty dollar auction or something. Yeah, they. If you look on eBay, you can find them. They're not very expensive. They're not very powerful either. I mean, I had one and yeah. came oh. to twinker around with, and it was like 
It was a nightmare, but it was running Windows 8, though, so take that for what you can, want. Uh, can you watch YouTube videos, at least, or Netflix? I'm or not Netflix? sure. It oh, has an Intel not. Atom processor As in it, so I'm maybe not sure what 720 the exact P? one. Because that's what the screen I'm is. I'm not sure what the exact one is. Here, this is what it, here, yeah, it's 64 gigabytes. Let me see. It's an Intel Atom Z3740D, which is 1.8 gigahertz quad core. Don't that's let actually, that fool you. It, yeah. will, I, it will not run all eight cores at 1.8 gigahertz. Yeah. Uh, no. No. And then it, it, it not, only has two gig. The only thing is it only has two gigabytes of RAM, though. Well, I mean, that's what my Pepperint computer has, though, too. Yeah. Here's the, the problem with, with talking about gigahertz is Intel has this feature, like, step boost, that you got the base clock. So, for example, I, my MacBook Air yeah, that- has 8 gigahertz, and then... And then Intel has this technology where it can oh, go up boost, to 2.8. There was not turbo a boost. series of Atom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Yeah, yeah this just says Atom. up to, so this is the turbo boost speed. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which so, will melt the back off the thing. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, yeah, it will. So even Atom processors wouldn't exactly have the same technology, right? It's very specific. Oh, well, the Intel iCore series has different technologies so the intel atoms aren't really that good when it comes they, to more than just watching youtube suck. videos or something we yeah. had we had when i was in the in the uh, chemistry lab out west we had actually ordered this is like on the kind of on the verge of the smaller computers and uh, we had actually ordered like 30 of these to use as lab computers giant mistake but they were, I mean, they were really small. We were hooking them up to Pascal systems to do um, automated lab work. And I'll tell you what, these things, they were running Windows XP, I think, at the time. And um, they were, they sucked. They were horrible. Not to mention all of these students running around flash drives. Oh, yeah, there are some interesting viruses. I think viruses were going through them things like you have no idea. <laughs> Um, I did yeah. secure one of them for myself and keep it in my office, and other students were able to, to infect it with anything. I used that for my lectures, though. It was, it was good. Yeah. Um, we're you know gonna... the sad thing is? There is no money in cleaning viruses out of computer. Once a computer gets really trashed from viruses, you might as well just a nuke and pave. Tell, tell yeah. that to Geek Squad. <laughs> That's how no, we make I most of our money, money, man. I tried to make money at it, and you can't get rid of everything in the computer once all the Windows files get rewritten and everything. Yeah. You, yeah. you can, yeah. but it, it you have to have some very good corporate partnerships. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Mm. Um, we need to there wrap this so, up here. Tom. So um, just yeah. go through and give us our final thoughts. Because it's like late, way later than usual. Good, Quint. With that, before okay. we do the finals. Um, one thing, uh, one thing I will add about researching parts for Linux. This is what I do all the time. Is if I'm trying to find some new part, and I on the Amazon page, just under the questions and answers, just look up Linux, and that'll typically give you a good answer. Because typically, Correct. somebody will yeah. have tried it with Linux. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, a that's a good plan. Um, Dan, give us your final thoughts. Learned a lot of stuff today. <laughs> it's still going. Battery's still fully charged. Nice. Um, Very good. Not, not to mention, I just it, I just thought of something. I have an extra hard drive for each one of these laptops I've showed you because I've religiously cloned all of them in nice. case of catastrophic failure or viruses. Yep. But Very yes, good. um... Um, Linux runs on even these old dogs like this. And um, uh, I never thought in a million years to double think a dual core Intel processor was 64 bit and, and 32 because I've been running them as 32 for so long until now. But yeah, um, Linux can definitely work and recycle some of your old hardware. I'm really glad that I have this old thing because it has some expensive hardware in it that they just don't make anymore. Very good. Um, the Dell, um, the HP laptop that I showed you, that's got Beats Audio in it. it has Beats Audio speakers on the, <laughs> across the top of it, but they sound horrible. 
I guess you got to buy the Beats Audio two hundred dollar headphones to Bluetooth it to it. <laughs> yeah, I think there's yeah. just a whole marketing thing. It is. This yeah. laptop's yeah. This laptop apparently has banging um, Olsen speakers in it. If you look, there's a B and O logo. I don't know how well you can see it right there. There's a B and O logo, yeah, yeah. but the yeah. speakers are trash on this laptop. It's a marketing thing. You can yes. only do so much with one watt speakers. Is the truth. You can only do well, so. The much. thing is, is that oftentimes the Dell computers have always had like the best sound of laptops i've ever heard uh the ones that i've had anyway and they were really good and then of course they became really started to get really bad again after a while because it's just like hey let's just upsell other stuff you know these are something i bought back in 2005 from best buy these are bose computer speakers yeah and they sound just about every good as bit as good as any other speakers you can get with a boom box on them and all that. I mean, they really are nice sounding speakers. I got them for a hundred dollars because they're, they're like this turquoise color. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, no, one other those, thing I will, must be Bose. Uh, Quint, final thoughts. One thing I will add, I'm, I'll stop talking after this, but <laughs> in my personal opinion, you should try to avoid NVIDIA graphics cards. Why is that? They're, the drivers they're getting, just aren't that good on Linux. They're getting better. Mine, work, I, mine works fine, and I gain yeah. pretty heavy. Okay. But I don't have the newest NVIDIA graphics card. I got a ten, uh, GTX um, 1080 Ti. I don't have the RTX ones and all that You know, new stuff. Yeah. Personally, I just also like the Radeons, too, and the Radeons work fine. Well, yeah. the newer Radeons are having trouble with those two, the brand new ones they came out with in less than a year. They don't quite have the drivers baked into the kernel that are fully functional. Hmm. Yeah. The one I have is more of a workstation, not a gaming card, though, so it's a little bit different. Yeah, the gaming cards are kind of like out there, but I have a RX 580 that I bought first when I built this machine, and I had all kinds of kernel problems with it. I mean, I would open up a game especially after a new kernel came out and everything would be in 256 colors instead of the full range of color it's like Fine. playing a windows 95 game or something <laughs> hey man i had true color in my windows 95 mm. deal with it uh tech final words um i don't really have much to say i mean just if 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 you can if it boots Put Linux on it, right? There That's you pretty go, much right? the short version. And, and do what Quint said. There, I think it was Quint. Type in the what you're looking for. Type in Linux, and somebody said it. Is that Quint, did you yeah. That? And don't um, and don't settle on the first distro you try and be discouraged because it don't work. Because that's what I ran into with Ubuntu 2004 yeah. Budgie. It plugs in, it boots, and everything, but none of the software or anything works. Nor would the drivers or anything work. But I put yeah, that, sure. a different version yeah, in. I distro hopped three distros on my laptop here before I finally set it on Fedora because I just Fedora I just there keep coming back to it. It just works. Yeah. There you go. Uh World of Linux. Or I'm sorry, World of Unix now. I change your name <laughs> on there. Yeah. So anyways, uh first I would recommend an AMD graphics card instead of NVIDIA. Uh NVIDIA the drivers are good. Uh, I actually installed them manually directly from NVIDIA's website and installed their proprietary installer and everything, and it works great. But I would recommend AMD because NVIDIA is just not there when it comes to Linux. And even though that they are planning to do open source drivers, I don't trust them when it comes to to their word on things. So uh, if, if you can, just buy AMD graphics card if not it's not the end of the world secondly mm -hmm. uh you need to test uh well the most popular linux distros on old computers or new computers you have to test them uh because to, to figure out if it works or not you have so much hardware that it really depends if linux is going to work completely fine on it so at least for me i always been testing stuff right mm -hmm. Te testing Linux distributions, trying different configuration stuff, and then finally I was able to figure out a configuration that worked, right? So that's my way of doing things. And uh, yeah. and other than that, that that's my final words. 
There you go. Yeah. My final is just kind of figure out what you want to do and uh, play around a little bit. Don't be afraid to experiment. And uh, of course, if you only have one system, you might want to get another system to experiment with. But experiment around and uh, learn as much as you can and ask what you want to do and find a search engine to answer that on Linux and you can probably figure it out. Um, So I am going on my other stream tonight in about a half hour, like nine o'clock Eastern time. So that is on my Christian channel. If you're interested in that, we're finishing up the book of first Peter today on a uh, exegetical study. Uh, so if you are interested in that, we will see you over there. I just dropped the link in the comments. And if you are not interested in that, then uh, we will see you tomorrow for the weekly news roundup, 9 PM Eastern standard time, where we will be looking at a variety, excuse me, a variety of news topics. So, With that, we will say goodbye. Thanks, everybody, for joining me today, and uh, we will catch the rest of you guys next time. Bye. Bye, Bye. everyone. Take care.